Good evening. Welcome to the Old Time Radio Superman Show. This is your host, Adam Graham, coming to you once again from our uh, uh, headquarters here in Boise, Idaho. Now, Superman and Jimmy Olsen are um, off uh, wandering in the woods. Uh, Jimmy Olsen, uh, Jimmy Olsen uh, wandering off, Superman needing to find out where he was gone. Uh, meanwhile, the circus train moves on, and uh, there's, uh, there's foul play afoot, and something is going to happen at Bridger Field. And we're going to find out what's going to happen uh, as we get into the part three of the airplane disaster. But before we uh, go ahead and get started, uh, friends, you, if you look out there at fiction today, not a lot of people read short story magazines, because it doesn't seem like the people who write short story magazines are making them for uh, you and me. Uh, they tend to be a little bit highbrow and, you know, maybe not uh, the, the fun-filled uh, adventures were, that we look for. Whatever happened to Buck Rogers? Whatever happened to Zorro? What happened to those type of characters? Well, there's good news. Laser and Sword Magazine, we are proud to bring these uh, stories into the 21st century for you. And you can uh, actually download our first issue for free on the house. We're confident that you will like it so much. And other issues are only a dollar twenty-five each, uh, so please, uh, so please uh, check check that out. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, that's lasersword.adamsweb.us. That's lasersword.adamsweb.us. Uh, but let's go ahead and we will get started here with the airplane disaster part three on the Old Tom Radio Superman Show. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. <laughs> Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Now, Superman, valiant fighter for truth and justice, champion of the weak and the helpless, who has appeared on Earth with a physical structure never before attained by mortal man. Superman, who is stronger than a locomotive, faster than a speeding bullet, and who walks about among human beings as Miles Clark Kent, news reporter for the Daily Planet. When we last saw him, Superman, in his character of Clark Kent, was on his way to Bridger Field, a private airport in the southwest, to investigate a series of mysterious plane crashes. As our story continues today, some time has passed, and Kent and Jimmy have reached Bridger Field. And he and Kent are beginning their investigation. Listen. Here's my office, Kent. Close the door and pull up a chair. Where's young Jimmy? I, I believe he went into Del Rio with one of your men. Jimmy's still young enough to be attracted by a circus. Mm-hmm. I still don't understand how you and Jimmy finally got here. I thought I told you. Jimmy got left on that siding, and I hopped off the train and went back to find him. And we just waited till the next freight came along and rode in on that. But about that gorilla... Mm-hmm. You're lucky you're still alive to tell about it, Ken. Uh, don't I know it. But that wasn't any accident, Hamlin. What? I say that wasn't any accident. That cage door was left unlatched, and whoever did it meant to do it. Good heavens, Kent. Why? Well, that's what I'd like to know myself. And also, why was our plane attacked in the air? Why did they come after us with machine guns? No, it's mad. Perfectly mad. I've had traces out all over the country. That attacking ship has simply vanished. And yet we know it crashed. You said that, didn't you? Oh, yes. Yes, it crashed, all right. But I'm not surprised it vanished. You're not? Hamlin, any power that could bring down six planes during their test flights... Right over this airport. Wouldn't have much trouble in disposing of a single plane out in the desert. Can't think what you're saying. I know what I'm saying, Hamlin. I'm absolutely convinced that the cause of the wrecks at Bridger Field is deliberate and human. I beg pardon, sir. Yes? Radiogram just came in. Mark Turgeon. All right, Bailey, you needn't wait. Excuse me, will you, Ken, please? Yes, certainly. Yeah. This is news. Am I allowed to ask? Hmm. We're being investigated now, all right? There's trouble ahead, Kent. What do you mean? Well, this says arriving Bridger at 12.30, and it's signed Fuller. Oh? Who's Fuller? Oh, just the president of the National Air Service, that's all. What? That Fuller? Yeah, the president of the Lions, Kent. He does things like this all the time. Flies his own plane wherever he goes. He's supposed to keep us on our toes and have the big boss drop in by himself and unannounced. Matter of fact, that is... Oh, wait a moment. What's the time now? Quarter past 12. Hmm, that's about 15 minutes more time than he usually gives us. 
What's that? Your clock's out of whack. No, no, no. That's the automatic radio warning. Weather report coming out of Del Rio. Oh. Uh, switch it on, will you? Sure. Don't you get weather reports from the government? Oh, yeah, sure. We just use this as a check. Funny how often they don't check. <laughs> Wait till it warms up, Norman. All right, here it comes. Thanks to Gallium Broadcasting Station, Del Rio weather forecast for northern Sonora and Chihuahua. Important. Storm coming. Plain will meet arriving gale in next or possibly few hours or minutes. They should use precaution for all our gale force. I will repeat. Oh, shut it off, shut it off. He's out of his mind. <laughs> That's the dizziest line of talk I ever heard. Well, to be fair to the fellow, you see, he's a Mexican translating into English as he goes along. Oh. But even then, there aren't any gales coming. Oh, is he always that far off base? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Only on his really important stuff. Mm -hmm. When he says important, you can but almost bet he'll be wrong. <laughs> well, now, getting back to the trouble. Yes, there are several mighty interesting points, Hamlin. For one thing, what happened to the motors? Mm -hmm. You remember you told me in the plane just before you got hurt that in every single one of the wrecks when you got to them, you found the motors missing? Mm, that's right. They simply vanished. Well, how do you explain it? Can't I can't explain it. It's fantastic. Not possible. I beg pardon, sir. Yes, what is it, Bailey? It looks like a dust storm coming up, sir. Dust storm? Where's it coming from? Over in the northeast, sir. Hey, that's sort of bad, isn't it, Hamlin? <laughs> what about Mr. Fuller? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. He has luck he'll get here just about the same time the storm does. And that'll be our fall, too. Go on out to the field, Bailey. I'll be right out. We're expecting a plane. Very good, sir. Come along, Kent. There's really a dust storm coming. It's something to watch. All right. <clears throat> what are they doing with those planes? Getting them under cover. Say, wait a minute. That does look like a storm at that coming right down the valley. <laughs> Alan, I think you did that Mexican announcer an uh, injustice. Nonsense. He said gales, not dust storms. Well, maybe in Mexican they're the same thing. Hey, that seems pretty terrifying. Is it as bad as it looks? Well, it gets good and dark, and then everything is inches deep in dust. Uh-huh. Thank heavens we don't get many of them, though. What I'm really worried about is Fuller. Well, he'll turn back when he sees it, won't he? Him turn back? <laughs> you don't know him. How can he see the land? He can't, unless he gets here first. When did he say he'd get here? 1230, wasn't it? Must be pretty near that right now. Is he prompt? On the nose. Maybe sooner. Because if he's coming from the west, he's got a following wind. What do you mean? The wind's with the storm, isn't it? No, no. Only near the ground. I haven't time to explain it all now. Mr. Hammond? Yes? <coughs> there it is. Plane coming in from the west. Hmm. Where? I don't see it. Yeah, there it is. It's just a speck. It's growing all the time. Well, the fool, he can see what's happening. Why doesn't he turn back? Hey, if he doesn't work fast, he'll meet the dust head on. It's coming down the valley hard, Hamlin. Say, there's some in the air already. Can't you better get inside? Get under shelter. When it hits, it's bad. I may do that. It gets into your throat and your eyes. Wait a minute. Where is he now? Coming fast, sir. But I don't think he'll make it. The dust will get here before he can get down. Bailey, warn the ambulance crew. Tell him to stand by for a crash. Hamlin, he's lower. He's going to try to make it. Oh, it's touch and go. Oh, we ought to go back. Look, he's down to a thousand feet, and here comes the dust. Kent, Kent, you get back. Get inside the house. Okay, Hamlin. This isn't my job. I'll see you later. What's going on up there? What's happening? Mr. Hamlin, sir. He's trying to bank. He's going back. No, he'll never make it. Now he hasn't a chance. Baby, look. Mr. Hamlin. What the? He's in flames. He's burst into flames. No, it's just like all the others. He's on fire and he's going to crash. Emergency. Quick, quick, run for it. Not much time for this. Thank heavens for the dust storm. At least they think Clark Kent's still back in the house. Now for that plane. Up, up, faster, higher. Getting there. Oh, he's a fire blazing. I was afraid of that. I thought they'd do it, whoever they are. Quick, quick. Gotta catch that plane before it crashes. Here we are. Oh, what heat. Now then, right through the cabin. Fuller! Mr. Fuller! Oh, help! Help! I can't see. Who's that? Uh, he's out. Unconscious. Great heavens, it's like a furnace. Motor's on fire. Quick, over my shoulder. We're almost on the ground. Going to crash any second. Out! Out and away! So, uh, Mr. Fuller, you're sure you feel all right now? Yes, yeah, certainly. Perfectly all right. That was a nasty crash, Mr. Fuller. I don't think I know this gentleman, Hammond. I beg your pardon, sir. He's the fellow that pulled you out of the wreckage. We didn't even know he was there. Well, that wasn't anything. If he hadn't got you when he did, well... Oh, sir, I'm obliged to you. He's Mr. Kent, sir. Clark Kent. Mr. Kent, all I can say is thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now then, Hammond, 
I'm here for two reasons. First, to find out what's been going on. We'd like to know that ourselves, sir. Disgraceful. Absolutely disgraceful. What's it all about, eh? Mr. Fuller, sir, we don't know. We haven't any idea. If I'd known you were coming, I'd have warned you off. Warned me off, eh? Warned me off? Well, well, sir, you saw what happened, even to you. Precisely. And I shall stay here till the whole thing is solved. But that's not the most important thing, Hamlin. No, sir? Hamlin, this is Tuesday. Quite so. On Thursday evening, just 48 hours from now, or slightly more, this field will entertain a most distinguished visitor. What? Distinguished visitor? Coming here? Here and nowhere else. At the moment, I can't tell you who or what this visitor is. But if anything should happen here at the field... But, Mr. Fuller, sir, really, he shouldn't come. He shouldn't come. No, under the circumstances, I, I can't be responsible. Why must he come to Bridger? He's coming to Bridger for good and sufficient reason. I can't tell you any more than that, except that you will be responsible. Well, Mr. Fuller, if you'll allow me a word, I think Mr. Hamlin is right. Unfortunately, sir, this is a decision for ourselves. Not that I mean to be rude, you understand, Hamlin. You have 48 hours to make Bridger feel secure and prepare for our guest. That's all. I beg pardon, sir. No, 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 no. Not now, Bailey. Mr. Kent, sir. Uh, yes? It's the boy, sir. Young Jimmy Olsen. Well, what? Is, is he hurt? Has anything happened? No, sir, but he's back from Del Rio. Back from the circus, Mr. Kent. And he says he's got to see you right away. He says it's important for you to come whatever you're doing. He says he's got to see you. There it is. Events come marching thick and fast at the lonely airport of Bridger Field. Can Superman solve the mystery in 48 hours' time? Can he prevent accident to the distinguished visitor arriving on a mysterious errand? And what has young Jimmy Olsen discovered at the Lubbock Tent Show, where Professor Hagen works out his sinister plan? Tune in and follow the next exciting chapter of Superman. Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Welcome back um, uh, here on the Old Tom Radio Superman show. Uh, so this is very intriguing. I, I like the way this cliffhanger is set up. This is one of the better cliffhangers they've had in this series. Uh, Lori in Georgia is in the cla- in the chat room, and she comments that. Uh, uh, she, appreciate, she appreciates that we make sure we have the entire adventure before airing any episodes. And uh, she said she's run into series before where they'll cut it off in the middle. And that's kind of, you know, when it comes to old-time radio, you'll have a lot of people who their main interest is just, it's old-time radio. Uh, I tend to like the plots and the adventure and having everything fit together. Um, now, everything... this. Now, these first 300 episodes, this is somewhat ironic, uh, because most of the episodes, it's the opposite. Like, I do the Dragnet show, and like nearly all the missing episodes are in the first season. Uh, with Superman, they uh, the first 300-plus episodes, uh, we've got them all, and we've got them in order. Uh, things start to get dicey when you get into 1942 and 1943. Uh, then you've got to make sure you've got the whole series. I mean, I've got one episode... Uh, that's just the first part of the series. We don't know any of the episodes that come after it. Um, so there are a lot of gems of Superman episodes, hopefully somewhere out there, hopefully not lost forever, and hopefully will be found. Uh, but we encourage you, if you're enjoying the series, uh, join us. Uh, and thanks so much for Lori for uh, listening in here. Uh, and we will we are here every uh, Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, every uh, Sunday afternoon at 3.30 p.m. Eastern. So we've got an afternoon and an evening show. Uh, and she's wor- worried about Superman. This is going to be a... Uh, if you're worried more about the, the uh, amazing... You know, about this visitor. The one thing I think that's interesting, when we should keep it into... Uh, take into account here, is, uh, you know, a lot of the scenes don't have as much suspense for us as for the people who were first listening to them. Uh, because we're used to Superman and his powers. But Superman is still a relatively new character. This uh, Superman, uh, written in 1938. This show, in 1950. So this is not as widely known. So uh, the limits are being tested. And they're still being established. Because uh, some of the things like, I can't see the, through the dust storm, uh, is, is not something 
you normally associate with Superman. Uh, but please also, uh, if, if, uh, if, if you enjoy the show, cast a vote for us on Podcast Alley. It helps the show uh, increase its listenership. Please check out Laser and Sword magazine, lasersword.adamsweb.us. And uh, also, uh, you will find there our Superman episode of the week. Uh, we choose a Superman episode uh, from uh, each of the several series that are available on N2TV. Uh, the first one we chose was uh, from Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, the pilot. And we will have a new one up for you on Saturday, so you can go over and watch that one as well. Because through NTU TV, we can implant it there, so you can watch it right on our site. So check that out. Uh, but I do thank everybody so much for listening. This is an exciting series, and we're going to find out what will happen to Superman Sunday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we will catch you then. For now, though, this is Adam Graham signing off.